what's going on. Hope everybody had a a safe and a great Easter weekend. If you had a long weekend, well, it'll feel a little longer right now with everything that's going on. But everyone's doing their part, and uh, people are doing great. But there's still some stuff to talk about. And uh, today, we're going to talk about a sport that's coming up. In the last couple of shows, we talked about stuff getting canceled midway through a season. But the next sport on the docket, and obviously we're knocking on wood, hoping it's going to happen, would be a football. And uh, with that, on the Pulaski Zone today, my uh, good friend John Pierce via the phone. Not sitting in here with me today. We're being smart. John, you with me, buddy? I'm here. There he is, John Pierce, a frequenter of the show. John, first off, before we get into anything, obviously the biggest question is, how are you? How's the family? Is everybody good? Everybody's good. Uh, we're, we're hunkered down in our house, uh, just going out for food. Every Well, I got my youngest son back, so we have to go out probably twice a week to get food. He's nonstop eating all the food in the house up. But uh, everybody's healthy and everybody's good. That's what we want to hear, my friend. Okay, so we talked with Bobby Mesker last week. We talked with Troy Canaba before that and Billy Ray Laxton before that as their seasons and jobs were in full swing. Not to say that yours wasn't. Obviously, just different things are going on. But let's backpedal a little bit because something of yours did get canceled. Uh, Last month, you were set to go down to Mexico with the football team to play an exhibition and and that didn't happen due to COVID-19. And it really, for Sol Ross, was one of the first things sport-wise that got canceled. I think we can all agree that it was the right decision. But just just take us through that time and uh, and how that all came about and, and the exhibition getting uh, canceled. Right. Uh, well, actually, that I, I don't remember the dates, but... Sunday, Monday, I went down, uh, stayed in Eagle Pass, went over to Pedre Negra uh, and visit the site, uh, did a couple TV interviews for the game, promoting it. Uh, everything was on point to have it, have the game. Uh, everybody was excited. I came home uh, back to Alpine. We practiced that Monday night, practiced Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Wednesday at practice, my phone was blowing up. Uh, it was Butch Worley, our AD, and Leo Dominguez. Uh, they were calling me saying, hey, the Texas State just banded uh, international travel uh, or the Texas State University system. So our game, you know, so Thursday I had to call everybody, cancel. Uh, so that wasn't a great phone call, but they understood. Uh, you know, I told them once we get back to the normal uh, living, you know, I'll be willing to come down there and do a clinic for their youth program. Uh uh, you know, so they seemed pretty excited with that, but you know they were a little bummed out. But had just had you know it was protocol. I had to go through cancel hotels, meals. That everything was set up that day, so it was just kind of crazy. And unfortunately, you know, practice came to an end. Then that Saturday, that was like a Wednesday or a Thursday, and then Saturday was spring break, and then it just snowballed where everything went from our little game being canceled to the nation being canceled and everybody going, staying in their homes. All right. So. so obviously this is early on and this is not something you can do every year. What is it? Every three years you can yeah. have, have an, have a, 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 an exhibition or a scrimmage, whatever you call it, you know, outside the normal international. parameters, international of yep. when you can obviously get going. So that doesn't happen every year. It's not as if that's a foreign concept. Um, what else though, has this pandemic, uh, obviously, we know baseball canceled, softball canceled, right. all sports, the school is uh, completely online. We, we, we understand when it comes to that what's going to be going on, especially in sports with your seasons, your practices, baseball, softball, it's all gone, tennis as well. What, um, what differences has this done for football just in the present time? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we were preparing for that scrimmage in Mexico, which gave us extra 10 days of practice. And then we were, if we didn't have this issue, we would come back from spring break after the game. And then we would have had 15 more non-traditional practice. So those games, those practices were where you race. Um, Obviously looking coming up uh, summer camps. uh, We, you know, that's a big 
fundraiser for our, our football program last uh, two years. We made probably over ten thousand uh, dollars from summer camps when we go to El Paso, Midland, uh, San Antonio, Austin. It's a lot easier to go to the population than try to bring a population to us. Uh, so those game, uh, those camps are getting squashed. Uh, and also we get to evaluate some high school kids when we're doing that too. It's not only it's for a fundraiser, but we do get to see student athletes and sell our, you know, sell our, you know, our university, our product. Uh, we don't partner up with other schools. Uh, we do it at a reasonable price and we use the average anywhere from 60 to over 120 kids at a camp. So we'll, we'll probably, we're going to miss those opportunities. There's still a slight window because those camps are in late July, but Realistically, I know it's not going to happen. Um, junior day, uh, we're, uh, we're, we invite all our junior rising seniors that's in our database to our campus, and we, we're going to have a, a camp for that April 17th, I guess this weekend, uh, with Sully Showcase, and that's got put on <laughs> – uh, you know, it's not happening as well. So that, you know, that puts us back a little bit, just exposure to our university. Um, but it's for the right cause, you know, I understand that. And, uh, then, you know, obviously from our perspective, just trying to secure our recruits that we got committed, you know, right now, uh, you know, and I told our administration this even last year that I was bringing in smaller groups to try to keep retention and keep guys staying. And I think it showed better last year with our recruiting numbers lower, but I'm going to increase our recruiting a little bit by 10 or 15 guys, uh, just because I think enrollment is going to need uh, that if we get back to a normal fall. Uh, so, but we're trying to land recruits. Uh, our, our commitment list is up to about 48 guys right now. Uh, so hopefully we can, you know, keep them in the mix. We don't lose any of those. And then we don't lose our current athletes. That's our biggest concern right now for me. Uh, with all our students going online, uh, each week our coaches reach out to about 10 to 20 uh, players. I got four, four guys, two, two full-time assistants, two grad assistants right now. Uh, and they're, they're reaching out to our players as, as long as well as myself, emailing them and finally going to set up my first zoom uh, meeting team meeting this Wednesday, if I can get the system working correctly. And I think I've got that down, but um, you know, just try to make, stay engaged with these guys. And we had to come up with workouts, you know, try to keep the guys active. We gave them a running workout uh, for about eight weeks, three days a week. Uh, you know, you can't go to gyms anymore. So we gave them uh, body workouts, uh, just some ideas to try to keep them active. And then the main thing is, just, hey, stay, stay up on your classes. Communicate. If you're having issues, you can't, you know, you can't get to a Zoom interview or your Blackboard, which is really, you know, how our university works on the academic side, if you're having issues, let me know so I can try to track down the professors or let the administration know that, hey, two or three kids are having trouble in this class, that class. Um, so, but so far it's been good. You know, I haven't seen any issues. Nobody, you know, you know, just besides a few students saying they're struggling in a class and then we're trying to get them extra help, trying to give them resources where to go uh, to prepare, prepare for that class. But that's, that's about it really, you know, just try to keep everybody in tech and don't know what's going to be tomorrow. Just take it one day at a time. For sure. I want to, I want to ask you about, um, the conditioning and, and, and trying to keep these guys, obviously with gyms and facilities shut down across the, the state and in the country. And you said you, you sent them your body workouts. Is there any way to sort of, um, keep track of that? Or is it really just the honor system there? Do you ask them, hey, tell me what you did today. Oh, I did this and I did this and I did this. Is there any right. way to track that? It's the honor system. Yeah. You know, the, good, the good thing is everybody else in the state is having the same issue. It's not just happening to West Texas or Little old Saul Ross or Alpine. So everybody's kind of got the same thing. And I don't know if you saw the article about Nick Saban and it got everybody in the SEC upset. He, you know, where there were, you know, budgets are unlimited uh he bought all his players or the, or the football program sent them um what's called apple watches yep. so they can monitor their workouts and so some of the sec schools didn't do that so that got a red flag going everywhere <laughs> in that conference but so i just sit back and laugh and read those articles about it but we're, we're not on that level <laughs> so, no for sure 
no, it's all honor system. And, you know, we've, we felt good about the eight practices we got in preparing for Mexico. And I know we got eight great padded practices in, and that's, you know, more than anybody in our conference. So we're real happy with that, especially with two new coordinators coming on. They had a chance to evaluate some of their pers- our personnel that we have here and what we're trying to do new. So uh, we're kind of excited about that, um, you know, but it's just right now, just hopefully we get to start up again in August. We don't know yet. For sure. And I, I want to go back to what you talked about the camps. And uh, I remember mm-hmm. I did the uh, I did the poster for that last year. And, and there, what was there, six, eight of them all throughout – all throughout the state, yep. maybe more, at least six, uh, I believe, all throughout the state. I mean, you went as far as Houston for some of those, right? Yep. Okay. Yep. yep. So, so with, we use about six, five to six of them. For yeah. Sure. So with that, and you're, you're talking about anywhere from 80 to 120 people. So obviously, you know, it's a great moneymaker, of course, for, for a program that obviously ain't going to be able to buy all the players I watch. <laughs> obviously, it goes to, to serious right. stuff. But yes, the money part of it is terrible. But obviously, it's a it's also a recruiting tool as well, right? Because you get to get out oh, yeah. there and 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 show your message and your staff in front of all these these younger kids. Because so that's that's got to be tough. And I want to I want to supplement that with talk about recruiting. In this sort of climate, I asked Troy and I asked Bobby about that, and and I've talked to Coach Novak, who we'll have on in a couple of weeks. And Coach Novak's big thing to that was, yeah, I got people that are interested, but they can't come see so Ross see what we have. And have you run into any of that? Right. Well, I know what you're saying, yeah. especially like you know, baseball, basketball. You know, their recruiting season just started. For the, for the 20, 2021 year for them, um, you know our our recruiting season technically started last year at this time. So we've identified kids. You know we've had kids on campus. Uh, we've had you know before this uh, pandemic started, we had probably about forty five kids committed already. And we're like I said, we're you know on paper it looks like we got about fifty two, but a couple kids are still on the fence. So our numbers are pretty good if we can get them all here. And, you know, if they can afford college after this, you know, as long as their family doesn't take a big hit with unemployment and all that, you know, there's a lot of equations that, you know, you can just expand expand on. But uh, our timeline, I think it was a little bit ahead of, ahead of this curve uh, compared to some of the other sports. Uh, but it will hurt us next year, not identifying kids, getting in front of them uh, as a junior going into their senior year. Uh, for for next year, so you know that hurts us, I guess, a little bit. But you know, I think we'll get over. We'll, we can overcome that because our recruiting cycle is a lot different than other sports. For sure, and obviously, recruiting and bringing more, and you have to recruit so many more people, and no one's gonna, right. no one's gonna argue with that. As your roster can be anywhere from ten times to you know four times oh, yeah. greater than somebody else's roster. So retention is obviously huge. So right now there's the fact of when you look at it, yeah, I got to try and get these new people in here. Some of them haven't seen our campus or are going to be able to understand our program perhaps until Mm -hmm. they have to go sight unseen. And the fact that everybody is home right now and you've got to work on keeping the players that you have. So you've kind of got a double-edged sword there with the biggest possible roster of any sport on any campus. Uh, how Talk about retention from the fact of I, – I, I'd be hard-pressed to imagine, John, some of the student-athletes that you have that were expecting to come back might not come back now, right? Right. I mean, especially from a finance that the family yeah. can't afford it. You know, I, I'm just trying to preach to the guys, control what you can control, you know, control the grades. That's something you can do, you know, and if you're having issues in the classroom, communicate with me, especially if it's trying to get the work to Saul Ross from when you're not in Alpine or you don't have a laptop or you don't have the, you know, you can't zoom or your internet speed is not up to par. Right. Communicate that with me. And the good thing is over these last, it seems like it's been a month, I guess, three weeks, whatever. Uh, every All our kids hasn't had any huge uh, problems. So, and I also take that off to our university stepping it up and Dave Gibson in the OIT department and our professors getting online. And, you know, uh, some of those professors may never had an online class before, and but they're doing it and they're stepping up and really 
helping our students out, I hope, because I haven't heard any negative feedback about the system. So I think the system's working. Uh, it's not the ideal system, but I think, you know, we'll get through it. I think, it, and that's why I told our players too, you know, hey, a lot of our professors and teachers don't, you know, this, this is going to be new to them too. So just be patient, communicate, email, talk to them. And I think that's the main thing in, uh, on both sides of the party. If they, if we know we're trying, I think we got a chance. So for sure, I've asked this of all of my uh, of all of my uh, people that have come on, uh, Billy Ray, Bobby, and uh, Troy. There, uh, it, it's a weird time. And John, you've been around a lot of sports. No one's gonna yep. argue that. We all have. Uh, I'm the vet here. <laughs> yeah, you're the vet. Here. Well, we should we should be having baseball games and tennis matches yep. and, you know, all that and softball and all that good stuff. And, and people should be, you know, packed in, in stadiums and watching stuff. Obviously we realize why it can't happen right now, but you've got, you've got student athletes sitting at home and you've got parents of student athletes that have, and Troy Canaba is a great example. His daughter Annika's played forever. Now, yeah, he's coaching her, but she's at the college level playing two sports. He has seen her play sports for ever and i'm sure you did it with 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 your kids and and other people have done it with their kids and now the parents don't have anything to do and they're watching their kids at home what's the advice you give to student athletes and the parents of student athletes that suddenly don't have anything um like like i said i mean it's a cliche but control what you can control you know uh right now they're taking classes control that i tell the high school kids that too hey finish up strong our recruits now that are graduating 2020 that's what you need to do, you know, focus on that, getting your work and getting your degree, um, you know, and have that closure. You know, we, we will get back to normal at some point, uh, just hope it's sooner than later. Uh, but um, that, I mean, in a situation like that, it's just like in a football game. When, when, when you kick it off, the game plan seems real great, but then, uh, then the bullet starts flying. And, you know, you don't know what's going to happen or you get behind or you have a turnover kind of control what you can control, you know, control the situation right now. You just, Hey, stay at home. Don't go out to uh, limit, only go out for food, you know, or essential trips, whatever those are, you know, that falls on your thing. But, you know, you see Dak Prescott, I guess the media or social media beat him up today, but he had a party this weekend with 30 someplace. You know, don't do anything foolish like that. Uh, you know, and stick to the rules and this curve, of, of the virus will flatten out and we'll get it under control. Um, you know, and we'll be back to normal doing what we're supposed to be doing, playing sports on weekends. And, you know, then we'll have our parties and stuff and that'll be time to celebrate. For sure. We're about halfway through the show. We're going to take a quick break. John, stick around. Uh, I want to talk about the future and uh, of Solros of football, because you've got a season yep. coming up so we can look forward to something potentially coming down. So uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll come back with uh, Sol Ross head football coach John Pierce right here on The Zone. Back here on the Pulaski Zone um, with Sol Ross head football coach John Pierce. We got him on the line. John, every time I play this darn intro, I look at my guests and I say, this is John Pierce music. <laughs> That's right, man. <laughs> Can I got the electric guitars. For sure. <laughs> let's talk. Uh, let's you talk. Know, you, you know, oh, go ahead. talking about that, you know, uh, my, one of my favorite bands, Metallica, releases a it's Metallica Monday, so they yep. re- release a, a, a previous concert every Monday. So I'm all about that. I know what you're doing. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's talk about what's coming down. We say we'll say potentially because obviously we don't know. We it, it's, it's 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 not fair to look into a crystal ball and think what's going to happen right. three four months from now. But we can talk about it as if it's going to happen. It's potential at this point. But all right, there's yep. a, there's a, there's a football season coming up, John, and uh, I've been interviewing you about this for for years now at least half the time you've been here and we've gone through some stuff um but this year is going to be different than other years because and not everybody might know about this you made reference to it earlier there's a new offensive and defensive coordinator coming in to join your staff this year and you, you had eight full tackle practices i want you to tell me a little bit about offensive coordinator uh, brett mcmurray and uh, defensive coordinator kevin canning I actually had him backwards. Kevin Canty's out. Oh, excuse me, Brett. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. And Brett, Brett's a defensive coordinator. Yes, you're correct. My fault. Uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm real what lucky to have both guys join our staff and get out of here in time uh, and right before, you know. So, But they had they had good good eight practices, all our, our talent. Uh, you know, we know the holes we got to uh, fix, but uh, we, 
you know, but we've done a lot of good things during that period, you know, just installing the basics on both sides of the ball. I'm not going to talk too much scheme wise because I know we're pretty general to Alpine, but I don't want right. to let the new stuff out when you got new coaches. Uh, but, um, but that, you know, I think it's going to be a, a little more exciting. That's all I can say. And hopefully we can do it and step up, you know, our players rise to the occasion to it and buy into what they're preaching and what we're, we're trying to get them to do and accomplish on the field. And I think so, uh, you know, I think it'd be back to, uh, more fun, fun nights in Jackson field. Obviously, with more players, you need more staff. Football certainly has the biggest staff of any yep. uh, any sport. How have how has your staff been helpful <laughs> in in these last few weeks with everything that's well, going on? Well, that's been crazy. You know, I lost Coach Brandon and I lost uh, Connor Simmons. Yep. So Connor Sinners well, got a head high school job back near his hometown. For him. So I'm down to two, two full-time coaches right now. Um, and we're waiting on trying to see when we can hire or if we can hire. Or, you know, I even told Butch Worley, if there's no fall, then we don't need to hire. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, you know. But uh, so we're kind of between a rock and a hard place on, on hiring coaches. I, I do have two grad assistants still in the program. Uh, they're working one, my one grad is from Florida, but he made it back home in time. Good. Uh, he's, he can't come back in, at least he's with his family, but he's still communicating with his recruits that he has. And he's, rec- uh, communicating with the current linebackers that we got on our team. And then our other GA is actually in town, uh, up in, in the dorms, but, uh, he's probably one of three students in the dorms, <laughs> but, uh, but anyhow, he's doing the same thing, and then our full-time coaches uh, are, are are there. Ah, they are in Alpine, and they're doing the same thing. You know, I haven't seen them in three weeks. And I even text them, guys. I feel bad. You just got here. I can't see you every day like we normally do. Uh, but they they understand, and they're actually happy. We're in a remote part of the country. You know, uh, where we're from, you and I. You know, I'm. You know, I know we got friends and family and loved ones back back East Coast, but yep. I'm so glad we're not there. And uh, but uh, they're kind of the same way. You know, uh, Coach Candy's from North Carolina, so he made it out here. And he, but he was in Wisconsin before he took on a job here. And then uh, Coach McMurray came in from California, so I got him from both coasts. But uh, they're excited about being here. Uh, they're you know, I know Coach Candy worked in some private school settings, small colleges. And he's excited to be at a state school and what we have to offer from, you know, the all costs of our academics and stuff. He's, he just, he's happy right now. So, uh, and so is Brett and he's, he's happy about it too. Um, so I think it's going to be good. You know, um, change is always good. Um, you know, we just got to embrace it and hopefully hit a home run with them, which I think we did. I, I know our players really liked what they did over the eight days we had practice. I think they're buying into it. And once that happens, then the product gets better on the field. For sure. Uh, in our in our final couple of minutes, John, I I, I, I got to ask because um, obviously, if and when there is a season, and again, we're going to project yep. that there is going to be one. Um, yep. It most likely we're going to find that there's not going to be as much time in the off season as normally available for players, for coaches. You've got two new coordinators that haven't had a lot of time with this team that run an offense, that run a defense. I mean, let's, let's, let's say we get started July 1 or something. When do the students normally come in, and when do you usually get going? Well, normally I'm a big push or advocate of Summer 2. Uh, obviously, Summer 2 is going to be already on line. Right. University made that decision, so that put a wrinkle in it. Because <laughs> usually, I would have about forty to sixty players back on campus, or even one time we—I think we had up to eighty kids back on campus during summer too. Uh, so that kind of got shot down, which I understand. And then, so say if we do have camp, we'll report August. I want to say eleventh or twelfth. I might be off a day, uh, and then we'll be rolling. So. Um, you know, it's going to be different, but, uh, you know, one of my mentors at Salisbury uh, State University in Maryland, he called me and asked me if I knew anything about camps, you know, preseason, fall, if you heard anything. And I was like, no, nah. I said, you know what, but 
in college football, everybody's playing like Division three right now because, you know, the Division one schools, they go to summer one, summer two. They have longer training camps. They're, they're, the bigger schools are getting treated more like Division three now, So, which is good. You know, we'll, we'll embrace it. We'll move on. Um, like I said, it's not just Saul Ross being affected by the pandemic. Every school is being affected by it. Every school's home. Every school can't, you know, all the athletes are, you know, UMHB is not working out in their weight room. No. You know, Harden Simmons is not working out in their weight room. They're doing the exact same thing our kids are doing. So um, so I think the, the playing field will be about the same. You know, maybe the kid's not 260. He might be 245 now, you know. So – Crazy yep, times. And, yep, and then we open up with Harden Simmons. Yeah. Right now, September 5th. So that's the first game up there in Abilene, which is no easy task. But I know they graduated 26 seniors, so I'm glad those guys are gone. I just hope they don't reload too well. So. You know, and it, like you said, everyone's having the same trouble. It's not as if, oh, they can go yep. see what Mayor Harden Baylor or what Howard Payne looks like. Go see their campus. Yep. It's 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 a it's a level playing field for everybody. All going through the same problems. Uh, and, yeah, and you talked, you know, we talked about Junior Day and it's kind of going back on that. And I'm going to actually call you when you get off the air. Uh, I, I need some of your help with the graphics for and sure. the video. I, I reached out to Matt Moore on a campus, works for an enrollment uh, management today. Uh, he's supposed to send some pictures and basically do like a Twitter social media blast yeah. of, of a Junior Day for us to show, show our campus, to get it out that way. That's, that's the way you have to change up. You know, these kids are sitting at home. High school kids are sitting at home right now. Uh, you know, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you know, that's social media, even Facebook, you know, it's taken off now because there's nothing else to do. Yeah. So, I found, I you found your Twitter account the other day. I think your last tweet was from like four years ago. Probably. <laughs> yeah. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big retweeter, not a big tweeter. I hear you. <laughs> Whatever you call it. So, so Ross said football uh, coach, John Pierce. Coach, I'm up the top yep. of the hour. Quickly, you mentioned Metallica Monday. Keith put six Metallica songs. It's coming up next. Guess what the first one is? Uh, I hope it's uh, Master Puppets, but Nope, short of straw. Next time. Hey. <laughs> Thanks, John. All right, buddy. We'll see you next Monday on The Zone. We're out. <laughs>